I begin this video by talking about on glaze transfer printing, which in the old catalogues was called jet enamelling. This is the second way of decorating Worcester porcelain, and it brings us to mention the man responsible for most of Worcester's printed wares, Robert Hancock. But first, let me explain how the process works. A flat sheet of copper was engraved using a graver. Designs were created by punching dots and cutting or engraving fine lines. To create a print, the engraved surface was filled with a hot oil-based enamel and the surplus enamel cleaned off. The hot plate was placed on the bed of a printing press. Dampened tissue paper was placed on the print and the plate and the tissue was moved between rollers which forced the paper to take up the ink left in the engraved recesses. The tissue was removed and placed and placed ink side down on the ceramic ware. It was firmly rubbed until the print was transferred to the ceramic ware. The tissue was removed by carefully sponging with soapy water. And after drying, the ceramic piece was fired in a muffle kiln to fuse the pattern onto the pot. The engraver Robert Hancock was a very important figure in the development of English ceramic printing. He served his apprenticeship in Battersea, where the process was believed to have originated. He moved to Worcester in 1756. He was to provide the factory with many engraved copper plates. He also supplied similar plates to the bow factory. Many of Hancock's engravings on Worcester pieces are signed RH and sometimes the signature is hidden within the pattern. Some prints include an anchor. Here are three of Hancock's well-known on glaze transfer prints. Birds in Trees, The King of Prussia and Queen Charlotte. He also did prints of King George II and King George III, William Pitt, the Marquis of Granby and Shakespeare. This Hancock print in puce enamel is known as Two Bridges. The Tea Party. Under glaze blue transfer printing, was not introduced until 1760. And here are some more examples. The mother and child print. And the pine cone and crab apple print seen on this beautiful crest dish. Here are some examples of clobbered transfer prints. The transfer print was painted over in enamels and the process was known as clobbering. Here we have two cups. The one on the left has a print, the Mansfield print in blue, and the one on the right has been over painted with enamels. And also in this case with some gilding. Many Hancock prints were coloured with enamels, such as this one here, Classical Ruins. This was known as coloured in rather than uh, clobbering. I believe that most coloured prints emanated from the Giles workshop, which I will talk about later. This design, known as the Red Bull, was done in line only and then coloured in. I believe it was a Hancock print. 
Now I'm going to talk about enameled wares. These can be divided into the following categories. Pieces painted at the factory, by particularly by James Rogers, the principal enameler, and by painters from the Chelsea factory. This uh, period was known as the Chelsea Migration in 1768. And other works which were enameled outside the factory by the James Giles Workshop and by enamelers called Jeffreys Hammett O'Neill and John Donaldson. Enamels were made from fritted glass and flux plus metallic oxides. They were mixed with a medium such as lavender oil and fired at temperatures from 6 to 800 degrees centigrade. This chart shows you the various colours which are derived from the metallic oxides listed here. And this gives you a bit of an idea of what the enamelous palette would have looked like. As you can see, the colours bear little resemblance to the colours of the finished fired enamels. This is why enamelling is an extremely difficult art. Here are some examples of the work of James Rogers. This city of Worcester Jug would have been a commissioned work and two early bell shaped tankards, this one with the birds and this one is known as the Sandy's mug. James Rogers signed these mugs and he seems to be the only Worcester enameler who actually wrote his name on his work. The term monochrome enamelling refers to work done only in one colour. Here are two examples in cobalt blue showing a variation in the intensity of the cobalt blue on these two pieces. This lovely cream jug has been enamelled in a puce enamel. The term polychrome refers to the use of two or more colours in the enamel decoration, such as can be seen on this early moulded sauce boat. Here are some examples of decorations influenced by designs on imported Chinese porcelains of the period. The early decorative influences were mostly Chinese, capturing the spirit of the chinoiserie. This decoration is called Chinese family. And this intricate oriental decoration on this lovely scalloped edge saucer was called the Jabberwocky pattern and it all can also be seen on this delightful fluted edged bowl showing both sides of the pattern. Designs on imported Japanese porcelains were also extensively copied at Worcester. Japanese porcelain began to arrive in Britain around 1680 and was imported by the Dutch East India Company from Arita in Japan. Designs like this kakeimon or quail pattern influenced the porcelain decorators at Worcester. Other Japanese styles were also emulated, such as this scarlet Japan pattern and this fan pattern, which can be seen on this large fluted edged plate. The influence and impact on the Worcester factory by German Meissen porcelain cannot be understated. The Meissen style flower painting came to the fore between 1755 and 1765. Some patterns and colour grounds were directly copied from the Meissen originals. Decoration in this period includes birds in landscapes and intricate flower displays, which were often associated with the artist James Rogers. 
Factory marks were infrequently used on polychrome wares during this period and identification is based upon an understanding of the paste and the glaze and the recognition of distinctive Worcester shapes. Painter's marks appear on the back of these pieces. Here are four polychrome decorated sauce boats. The two moulded shapes on the left are known as cos lettuce and the two on the right are typical of quite a few different moulded sauce boats of that early period. Quite a lot of moulded plates were decorated with enamels. The blind earl plate, as you can see here, was one of these. The blind earl was the Earl of Coventry, who was blinded in a shooting accident and asked Worcester to design something that he could feel. This one is transfer printed in puce enamel, and this one is enameled but you'll notice that it doesn't have a handle. Leaf dishes also received the same treatment. These leaf dishes were also a direct copy of mice and examples. Here is a different shaped leaf dish, the cabbage leaf. See how the artist has tried to depict the leaf folded back with that puce enamel addition. Now we will look at a couple of examples of open work, or as it is also called, reticulation. This is a very well known piece of Worcester and the illustration on the cover of Henry Sandon's book. It is a covered basket and stand referred to as a roast chestnut basket or tureen. The body is embossed with flowers and honeycomb diaper with twig handles and also with applied flowers and leaves painted in on glaze enamel colours. In 1768 the Chelsea porcelain factory closed and many skilled enamelers came to the Worcester factory. Porcelains decorated with exotic birds previously attributed to Chelsea now began to appear on Worcester porcelain. Here are some examples of the skillful enamelling achieved by these artists. This technique of enamelling was called dry blue. The addition of tin oxide to the cobalt blue enamel paint results in this rather dry looking and paler blue finish. It was probably done in the James Giles workshop. As was this beautifully decorated tureen with its shell handles and the artichoke and leaf knob. This picture introduces you to another type of decoration known as penciling. This was done mainly in black enamel using a very fine brush and the quails on this teapot were done in this manner. In some cases it could almost look like a transfer print. 